What's up everyone? Today I'm gonna to show you around my studio, where I make everything, where I create, and where I spend a lot of my time. It wasn't always like this. 15 years ago is when I started making music and I had a really basic laptop that somebody gave me, a copy of FL Studio and some plug-in wired speakers that were about 20 pounds. So this is the culmination of those last 15 years, accumulating gear, selling lots of gear and finding really the instruments that resonate with me the most. So the heart of any studio is sound. I've been using these Genelec 8040 monitors for the best part of four or five years now. They are just incredible. I've had different monitors in the past and tested different ones when I was looking to purchase a new pair and these ones just sounded the best to my ears. And then in the corners of the room, we have acoustic panels, which I built myself out of rock wall and bought some fabric that looked quite nice, speaker cloth maybe I think it's called, and wrapped it around. And then on the back is a picture wire with hooks and that's how it's hung up on the walls, pretty clever. So as well as acoustic treatment and nice monitors, I used this Sound ID reference from Sonarworks. This little device is a microphone and it comes with software that you essentially load up and use it to support the measurement and calibration process. And essentially what this does is it reads the frequency response of your room or space and eventually it ends up creating an EQ curve that adapts your monitors to add or remove resonant frequencies in your space. I was a little bit skeptical of that at first, but when I did it, it was night and day and has really helped me with mixing and hearing a true and accurate sound. When I'm not using studio monitors, I am working with headphones and the headphones that I've been using at the moment are by IIII. They're wireless, which is really cool because it enables me to move around my studio cable free and they are latency free or really low latency that for me, I can't really perceive, which means that I can play the piano, play the keyboards, Rhodes or program some drums on Ableton Push with really low latency. Yeah, super nice. Let me show you the storage solution that I've come up with. I have two bookshelves, which are from Ikea, relatively cost effective. And I bought these really neat baskets that enable me to keep things in, which yeah, just keeps things nice and tidy and organized. And also it enables me to keep some of my music here as well. Books that have helped me to learn jazz and improvisation and the piano and yeah. So another key part of storage is cable management. Now for about 10 years, I just left cables everywhere, all over the floors, hanging down from behind the desk. Yeah, just trip hazards everywhere. But when I moved into this space, I took the time to think about cable management. So basically I've mounted everything to the underside of the desk. Having no cables on the floors just keeps things nice and minimal, tidy, it looks good. And that way I think it keeps the mind nice and clutter free as well. Let me show you my sofa, which doubles up as a sofa bed and is super comfy and convenient. And basically is, yeah, somewhere where I spend a lot of time reading, listening to music or just chilling, hanging out. And there's also awesome for when people come around and we're working on collaborations. And what's super handy about this is that it doubles up as a sofa bed, which means that during late night sessions or uh, when I wanna be working on music late, maybe for a deadline or if inspiration strikes, it means that, yeah, I could just chill and stay in here as well. Whilst we're talking about storage solutions and management solutions, let me show you the final piece of the studio that I think uh, makes a big difference. It's this microphone stand. Essentially, I used to have lots of different microphone stands and because there's a small amount of floor space, I was tripping up over them, maybe hitting my foot or banging my toes. And so I looked for a solution and found this. It's the latch lake stand. It's just one unit with a boom arm that I can fix microphones to. And they also sell attachments so you can attach multiple microphones and other devices to create a rig that just suits your needs. I recently filmed another video about how I mic my piano. Yeah, if that's up, go and check it out. I'm a huge fan of artwork, whether that's working with artists to produce artwork for releases, albums, or even paintings in my studio. So this is by Trevor Neil Jones, who's a neighbor and good family friend, incredibly talented artist. So he's painted this, um, I think is entitled Battlegrounds. Yeah, and also, 
this beautiful painting as well, which is from the view of his studio in our hometown of Manchester. Yeah, really beautiful. And then finally, I also have this painting, which is really a poster that was from a project I was working on back in 2014 uh, with DJ Yoda, and the project was called Breakfast of Champions. And the project culminated in an event where lots of new music was performed for the first time after a really intense period of time. And there was an artist in the audience who drew this during that very first gig and then gifted it to the project team. And it's a really cool piece of artwork and yeah, great memory as well. A key centerpiece of this studio and where I spend almost all of my time here is at the desk. So this desk has gone through lots of different forms. It began as a really simple desk with these three planks, some hairpin legs, and that was it. After building the basic desk, I then had this scaffold plank as a shelf in another room. When I took that down, I thought, hmm, maybe this could be used as a speaker stand. And so I was thinking about how to even attach that to the desk until I spoke to a friend of mine who's really good with this sort of stuff. They recommended these scaffold pipes, which essentially I've attached to two washers to the desk and the underside of the shelf. And yeah, it works really well. And then the final piece of the desk, which I then added later, was this keyboard tray designed by somebody who I was in touch with on Instagram, who basically asked me for the dimensions of my desk, the dimensions of my keyboard, the height, all of that good stuff. And then they cut it to size, sent it over, and then just showed me how to attach it to the desk. And it's been really sturdy and probably the best addition to this space that I've ever had. So as well as the desk, the heart and lifeblood of this studio are the keyboards. Of course, I use those in all of the music I make and release so far. And here, I just wanted to show you my piano. So I've had different pianos. I used to have a small kawaii that came up to about here. So my very first releases was on that. And I got this piano two years ago and it's a Yamaha U1 from Park Pianos. Anyone in the Northwest of England, check them out. It's beautiful, it sounds great. And I love using this felt, um, which is essentially a practice pedal to dampen the sound, but I think it adds a really nice warm character. So that's on almost 100% of the time and microphones ready to go. And then at the desk, I have the Nord Piano 5, which is a fantastic piano that I use to perform live with and also use as a MIDI controller, as well as sometimes recording the inbuilt piano sounds, which are fantastic, directly from Nord. Over on this side, we have two other keyboards that I use. They are the Prophet Rev 2, which is a beautiful instrument and has stood the test of time. I think it was actually the first synth I owned and I haven't sold it and don't plan on doing so. And then the Rhodes Mark I, which is such a beautiful keyboard, but as you know, or might not know, they're quite expensive to buy in good condition. And I was looking for them for so long until I found one that came up in Cardiff and it was a really good price, but was listed as a Project Rhodes, which basically means that it wasn't in very good condition. But I decided to go and see it and the guy who was selling it was really lovely, took it home and got to work. During the lockdown COVID period, I spent the best part of three months researching, learning about the instrument and restoring it myself, which was a very difficult process, but really rewarding, mostly because now I understand how the instrument works from the inside out. So I'm using a MacBook Pro, and as well as that, I'm using Ableton Push 3. This is the standalone version, and this was literally delivered just a couple of days ago. I'm having so much fun discovering the potential of Push 3 and how best to integrate it into my practice and workflow, both here in the studio and also for live performances too. So I think that's everything for this video. Hopefully I've not missed anything. If you found it useful and enjoyable, please hit subscribe. It would massively make a difference and see you in the next video.